In this video, we're going to cover some of the new updates that came out as part of Power BI's August 2025 update, including some updates to the Copilot features, Pro license support for org apps, and semantic model refreshes with data pipelines. All of that and more. So without further ado, let's jump in. So let's start with this feature that lets you write measure descriptions using Copilot with a click of a button. This was in preview and it's been out for a while now, but now it's in general availability. When you click this button, it basically generates descriptions for you quickly using Copilot. This makes it easier and faster to document your measures by reducing the effort of writing all of these descriptions from scratch. As these descriptions are written by AI though, and they can be prone to mistakes, you should read through the descriptions that it generates and just rewrite it to how you need it. Filtered report summaries are now supported in the standalone Copilot experience in Power BI. This basically means if you ask questions to the standalone Copilot, the Copilot itself can actually apply filters based on the questions that you've asked. This gives you a bit more in-depth answer to your questions without actually setting up these filters in your reports yourself. You can see what filters are applied, what it references against, and even show you which part of the report or which visuals it's coming from. It's a great addition to the standalone Copilot experience, which is probably something that I would have expected it to do already, but I guess it doesn't yet. Having these filters applied and this working properly does depend on your semantic model being in a sort of good state for the AI to understand what you mean. The new org app experience is now supported for pro license workspaces. In one of my most recent videos, I did cover org apps. And one of the things that I covered there is that the new org app experience does require a fabric license or fabric capacity in order to use it. As of this month, though, that video is now a little bit inaccurate because now the new org app experience is supported and you can now use it with your pro license workspaces. The new org app experience allows you to create multiple apps within the same workspace, which lets you control kind of different apps and package different reports for different users or audiences. It's a little bit different from the kind of the legacy app called now the workspace app. And I did cover it in a previous video. So if you're interested to know what the difference is between the two, go check it out. So if you haven't tried the new org app experience, it's now a good time to do so because now it's supported with kind of pro license and pro workspace. And it has a lot of really cool features that the old workspace app didn't. So go check it out if you haven't yet. The feature that lets you edit your data models in the Power BI service also received a few updates. Error handling on this has now been updated. When your apply queries fail, you can now retry without starting over, which sounded kind of bizarre to me because it meant that any changes that you made before the failure will just disappear. But I guess that's now fixed with this new update with the updated or improved error handling. Query folding, also called as kind of native queries, are also now supported in this edit model from the Power BI service. This is basically a feature that lets you bundle up your steps as SQL queries so that the transformations are done in the source and not in Power BI, which saves you a lot of processing power by passing on that hard work to your source. Not a lot of data sources or steps are covered with query folding. So if you're interested in what this is and how it can help you, go check out my previous video on query folding. Semantic model refreshes are now available from the Fabric data pipelines. You can access this from the advanced refresh from the semantic model. This basically lets you set up refreshes to be triggered based on certain events or based on refresh completions from either other semantic models or data flows. So a very common scenario for this would be if you have a data flow that you kind of use to ingest the data and you have your semantic model that you use for reports, both of them needs to be refreshed in sequence. So basically when your data flow it finishes refreshing, you wanna refresh the semantic model so that your report shows the most recent data. Previously, you couldn't do this. And to kind of get around it, what I do is I set up a scheduled refresh, which is staggered between my data flow and semantic model. So I would set up the data flow to refresh at, let's say, 7 a.m. And then my semantic model would refresh at 8 a.m., hoping that when the data flow refresh finishes by 8 o'clock, the semantic model can refresh its data. The problem is that there's no dependency between these two refreshes. So if the data flow fails to refresh, the semantic model will still refresh and show you a kind of old data. With this new updates with the data pipelines, you can now set up your refreshes to happen sequentially so that when your data flow finishes refreshing, 
the semantic model refresh will be triggered straight away. There are some other refresh templates that you can take advantage of, which are some of the most common scenarios, I'm assuming. You can add and modify other nodes, like adding notifications on success or failure, which previously you could only do through email and only when the semantic model or data flow refresh fails. Now you can trigger events when a refresh is successful or failed. And being able to set this up using this node-based system makes it super easy to set up and literally no coding required. It's almost reminiscent of the Power Automate flows, which I have used before, where you will need to set up triggers and actions. The only thing is that Power Automate doesn't have the ability to check when a data flow or model refresh is complete to trigger another refresh, or at least as far as I know. While Power Automate doesn't require Fabric license, the data pipelines do. So if you don't have a fabric license and you want to see how this data pipeline works with the refresh templates, let me know in the comment section box below and I'll make a video out of it. And that's really it for this video. It's quite a short update today and not a lot with the kind of visual side of things in Power BI, but I think that's okay. So we'll keep this video short for now. Thanks for watching. As usual, I didn't cover everything that was in this month's updates, only the ones that were pretty interesting to me. So if you want to learn more about anything else that was released in this month's updates, I'll leave a link to it in the description box below.